obvious, I believe, that I'm not Jeff Carlson. <laughs> if it isn't obvious, we need to talk after worship. Um, this is the third Sunday of Advent, and Pastor Jeff and his role as conference dean, our conference is called Mountain West, and it's uh, from the west side of Denver all the way to Utah. So he's the dean of that big area. And today he's very excited to be in Grand Junction, where uh, Pastor Dan Carlson, no relation, is uh, being installed in the campus ministry at uh, CMU. So uh, I'm very, very excited. As you know, <clears throat> I was pastoring out there in uh, Grand Junction, and uh, we were really working hard to get Dan involved with that position, and I'm very excited. Wish I could be there, but I'm glad Jeff's there. It's, it's very important for that campus, being a former college professor, to have a Christian um, organization there on campus that could reach out to kids. Welcome to worship. As always, we are grateful to acknowledge and honor the youth people upon whose ancestral homelands we gather for worship, as well as our indigenous siblings who continue to call this land their home. Please take a moment to fill out the black notebooks that are in each pew towards the end of the rows and pass them down. Some of today's songs and liturgy are in the red ELW books and the rest are printed in the bulletin. Let's take a moment to come to a place of worship. Look inside. Look in your heart. Find your prayer needs right now. Please rise now as you are able, in body or spirit, and turn in the bulletins to the confession and forgiveness. My friends, God is patient and merciful and desires that all people repent, turning, our, turning anew our hearts and minds from misleading paths to the way of life. Let us take some moments of silence to confront our sins and brokenness and then confess them to the one who opens the heavens and draws near to us with salvation. Everlasting God, we confess that you will not be like the word Smantling causes of poverty and aging, to disregard and hate them from systems that favor us, to the issues of others that perish, their errors of creation healthy, cruelty to neglect and self holding, and left us broken, discontented, and fearful. Forgive us for the sorrows by your refining power.
How would you know if it's on? Because it's not working right now. It's not working, and how can you tell it's not working? Because it's off. <laughs> <laughs> When I was a college professor, I had a, I had a lecture on that concept, but we won't go there. <laughs> Is how would how do you know it's on? Mm hmm. Well, let me do something. Is the light on or off now? On. On. How do you know? Because there's a light over there. <laughs> <laughs> Light over there. Um, so you're sure that it's on? Yes. I got another hard question for you. Can you see the light bulb? No. But you know it's on. You know it's there, right? Uh huh. And why do you know it's there? Because the light bulb didn't work. Well, <laughs> you had the answer. What were you going to say? <laughs> it was the right answer. Go ahead and say it. Because it's shining on the ceiling. Exactly! <laughs> it's shining on the ceiling there. Do you know, I, when I was a little boy, I, someone taught me that Jesus is like a light bulb. He's just full of light and love and wonderful things. But we can't really see the light bulb, can we? No. We can see the light, the love, the compassion, the kindness through the reflection, right? So Jesus is this little light. Oh, don't look in there. <laughs> Jesus is this little light in here. Who do you think is up there on the ceiling? Who are those people? That's us. We reflect Jesus' love to other people. And that way we know that Jesus is there. And when we don't, we can't tell. So Jesus is like a light bulb. And because we shine the light to other people, they can see Jesus. You get the idea? Yes. Yeah. Was that hard? <laughs> you all got an A on the test. Good job, everybody. Thank you for coming up. And I'm sure Pastor Jeff will be back next week. Let's see if I can stand up again. <laughs> got it. Thank you. Didn't look so wonderful, but it did. <laughs> Please turn in your bulletin to the Advent Wreath Blessing. I consider Advent to be a very important time to me personally. My mother absolutely loved Advent. She loved seeing manger scenes. So every year I think of her when I see the Advent candle manger scenes. Maybe this time bring forward some early memories in your life that uh, you remember about Advent and getting ready for Christmas. Let us pray. Praise to you, O oh God. You hold our joy and sorrow. We bring to Christ's crown and light out of death. Bless us as this light grows, we send sorrow and sighing to the good Give us strength and patience, trusting that you are true to your promises. By your wonders here at hand, transform the lives of all who suffer. Amen. Turn in the red books to song number 240. We will sing the first verse as we light three candles.
reading is from Isaiah, the 61st chapter. Though the people had returned to Jerusalem from exile in Babylon, they continued to face hardship and oppression. In the language of the Jubilee year described in Leviticus, Leviticus, yeah, 25. The prophet moved from the Spirit of God, announces deliverance from those who are oppressed and comfort for those who mourn. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. They will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord to display his glory. They shall build up the ancient ruins. They shall raise up the former devastations. They shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. I will faithfully give them their recompense, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants shall be known among the nations and their offspring among the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge that they are a people whom the Lord has blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord uh, my whole being shall exalt to my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bride, bridegroom decks himself with a garland, and as a bride adorns, adores herself with jewels, for as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up. So the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Now, if you please turn to the bulletin on page five, the song, a version of the song. <laughs>
Thessalonians, the fifth chapter. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks to all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit, do not despise the words of prophets, but test everything, hold fast to what is good, Obtain, abstain from every form of evil. May the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely, and may your spirit and soul and body be kept sound and blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will do this. For the word in scripture, for the word among us, for the word within us. Thanks be to God. Today. 
Now, yes, we could say it's the sun and the moon. But one thing I've seen in the scriptures is there are a lot of metaphors, there are a lot of hidden messages about our day-to-day -day life. Let's accept the idea that Jesus is the greater light and that we, as his followers, are the lesser light. Like my little story about flashlights, we reflect love and compassion during times of darkness, and the moon reflects the sun at our night. And I think we were doing that during the times of COVID. It was a dark time. We were doing our best to reflect the light when it was very dark. When Jesus walked among us 2,000 years ago, the world saw the light directly. Can you imagine looking at Jesus Christ, the light bulb himself, back in those days? And I think I would have been overwhelmed. Now we can see the light from the bulb when someone allows that light to reflect from himself or herself. Second question, how do we reflect the light? We are reflecting the light when we forgive someone for harming us. We are reflecting the light when we visit someone who is sick or struggling. We are reflecting the light when we see the pain others struggle with. We reach out as best we can to help. And a story from my life came to mind. As many of you know, I was a single dad for a while. And I had three little girls, ages two, four, and six at the time. And two, four, and eight, excuse me. My daughter, Sarah, who was two at the time, had to go to the hospital. She was very sick. And they said I couldn't go in the room with her. And I heard her calling, calling, calling. And I didn't know what to do. So I stayed outside the door on the floor for a night and a half, all night throughout the next day and into the next night. And every time she would call out, I would say, I'm here. I hear you. By the way, I am not the one that I'm pointing out. There was a wonderful nurse. A lady saw me. And she came over and she said, I understand the rules. What can I do to help you? So she brought me a blanket. She brought me a pillow. In the morning, she brought me orange juice and a little bit of breakfast. Mm. Through the day, she did things for me. And another nurse came along. That wasn't in their duties, I'm sure. You know, their duties were to check temperatures, change bandages, things like that. It wasn't to bring stuff to some guy sitting in the hallway listening for his daughter. So I've always considered them as a light of Jesus Christ being reflected back on me. Then the question comes to me, what makes us stumble and stop reflecting the light? There are dark days when it's hard to reflect the light. Things of this society, this world, will throw obstacles, clouds between us and the light. Clouds of fear, of pain, and depression will block the light. I myself have struggled with that quite a bit. But I still continue to look through the clouds for the light. Then the question comes up, what can we do with those people who are struggling in pain? This is where all of us come in. When one of us struggles with these clouds, when it's dark and they can't see the light, the rest of us need to reach out and bring the light to that person. Not through words. In all the years that I've served as a pastor, one thing I realized it isn't words that we bring light to people. It's by our presence, by our compassion, by our caring. Be there for someone. Make sure they don't walk alone. That was that nurse in the hospital. She kept coming over and asking if I needed something. I felt like I wasn't isolated in a darkened hallway alone. As many of you know, for about 13 years now, I've been studying trauma. There is one treatment that stood out to me when I studied it that can reduce the impact trauma considerably. Often, we leave those <clears throat> who are suffering alone. We're hesitant to walk with them in their pain. You understand what I'm talking about. When someone's in pain, you pull away from that. You don't want to get pulled in. We are social creatures. 
and we need one another when we're carrying pain. Yes, one of the biggest answers for people experiencing trauma is to not feel alone. It isn't magic words, it's being there with them. Being the light, again, is not about words. It's about holding each other up, holding a hand, putting an arm around them, bringing them a casserole, coming over and sweeping their porch, whatever it might be. That person who's in pain, who can't find the light, will feel understood, accepted, and cared for. It's about buying a meal and listening, or folding laundry with that person in pain. In 1985, when I was that single dad, and I was alone at Christmas, I broke down crying over once. Great clouds formed around me that day. I couldn't see anything but darkness. I cried out to God and felt a presence that seemed to say, know that I love you. I am with you, even in the pain. I have taken that as an example of how we could walk with others in pain. Know that I love you. Know that I walk with you. I'm here for you. In all the hardest times of my life, there has been someone who's come over and said, can I help? I care about you. Did they fix the problem? Most of the time, no. But I'll tell you what, I clung to that person. There was one person that came over and visited me weekly. And I'd open the door and I felt this lightness. And the person just came over once and brought me a cheeseburger. That was the best cheeseburger in my life. Because he came in and ate with me. Did he tell me how to fix my life? came and walked with me. He lived my life. I felt the presence of the greater light, Jesus, in one of the worst moments of my life and realized, here's the point, we are called to do the same for others. This to me is the core of the Christian message. We are to be the light for those who are struggling. And I've seen an awful lot of darkness and struggling around us recently. Jesus offers us an invitation. Bring light to those in pain and need this Christmas season. Our lesser lights can bring a lot of healing. If you've been healed, and I dare say many of you have, maybe do the same for someone else. I forgot to bring my flashlight up. <laughs> Let's reflect the light for others in our society this Christmas. Let us pray. Father, I pray your love fills each of us this Christmas season. Bring us to people in pain. Let us be the love, the light, the kindness, the compassion, the walking word that these people need. Let them see that you indeed are the light. Father, give us strength. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. I invite you to turn in our red books to the song of the day, number 243.
prayers of the church. God of power and might, tear open the heavens and come quickly to this weary world. Hear our prayers for the church, the world, and everyone in need. Lord God, pour out your spirit upon the anoint and anoint Kayla, Annie, Andrew, Sarah, and all who celebrate their baptismal anniversaries this week. This congregation and your church throughout the world to bring good news to the oppressed. This month, we pray especially for universal human rights and World AIDS Awareness. Guard and guide Rainbow Trail Lutheran Camp, our mission partner, First Lutheran and Gibson, our intern Edward, our Synod Bishop Jim, and our presiding Bishop Elizabeth. Stir up your power, O oh God. Stir up your power and come. Lord God, as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so you will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. Protect forests, orchards, rainforests, and all wooded areas from disease and deforestation. Keep us grateful for their gifts, oxygen, food, shade, and shelter. Teach us to be faithful stewards of all that you have entrusted to our care. Stir up your power, O oh God. Stir, Stir up your power and come. Lord God, pour out your spirit upon and anoint those with power and authority to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, and to proclaim the year of your favor. Grant wisdom and compassion to those who work for public safety and all who work within prisons, jails, and courts. That mercy may increase and violence wither away. As we pray for all nations throughout the year, this week we pray especially for the people of Hong Kong, Macau, Taiwan, and the mainland of China. Bring greater understanding and cooperation among these nations as you command. We pray also for our enemies. Stir up your power, O oh God. Stir up your power and come. Lord God, comfort all who mourn. Provide for those who mourn a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, and the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. Provoke us to provide for all without adequate housing, food, and employment, or access to health care. Empower us as allies and advocates for all who suffer in any way, including those we name before you now, both silently and alone. Stir up your power, O oh God. Stir up your power and come. Lord God, you love justice and hate robbery and wrongdoing. Open our hearts to those who serve as truth tellers in our church and in our society. Bless leaders in church and society in their task of proclamation. Amplify voices of peacemakers, advocates, and especially those whose voices are ignored or are marginalized. Stir up your power, O oh God. Stir up your power and come. Draw near to us, O oh God. We entrust to you all for whom we pray and all for whom we have neglected to pray. Restore us with your great and everlasting mercy. Amen. May the hope and 
and the peace of God be with you all, yes. always. And also with you. Let us share that sign of peace. <laughs> everyone on the TV too. Let us pray. Generous God, The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, 
that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God. You comforted your people with the promise of the rescuer, through whom you will make also make all things new in the day when he comes to fulfill your reign of shalom, peace, and faith-filled living. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the faithful of every time and every place, we praise your name and we join their unending song. Instructions for communion are printed in the bulletin. Uh, for those people at home, I'd like to remind you that if you have bread and a drink at hand, they are blessed in the name of Jesus Christ. Share with us in this communion.
Let us pray. Generous God, stars. Bless your advent waiting. The long-expected Savior fill you with love. The ever-present Spirit guide your journey now and forever. Amen. Our sending song is number 257 in the Red Book. in the back of the bulletin. Take a look at what's going on there. Let's see if I can highlight some things. First of all, I uh, noticed that uh, our presiding bishop, Elizabeth, uh, has been dealing with some sort of illness, and I'd like for us to keep her a special prayer this week. She's struggling a little bit. Um, thank you to those who helped with service today. Uh, there are some birthdays and anniversaries there. Um, people with concerns and joy, please contact the church office. Let us know what you're struggling with. Uh, every week whom we pray for. Uh, Christmas Eve poinsettias, $15 each. Order envelopes are available in the entryway. Uh, I'd like to remind everybody our Thursday uh, Bible study at 1 o'clock via Zoom. And uh, we have a longest night evening worship. Uh, cor uh, choir rehearsals, and uh, the choir meets Sunday morning at 9 a.m. And there are the things for next Sunday, which is unbelievably Christmas Eve. <laughs> Do the years go faster as we get older? Is it yes. just me? <laughs> uh. Does anyone else have any announcements? Yes. I just wanted to say that we have 15 poinsettias that still need sponsorship. So if anybody is inclined, uh, the envelopes are in the entryway. And please say who you'd like, how you'd like to dedicate it to the glory of God or to in memory or honor of somebody specific. Thank you. Any others? I would like to, by the way, thank my wife for helping me with the sermon this week. I'm a little out of practice, so she was very instrumental. Our sending song, did we do that already? Yeah, yeah, yeah. My friends, go in peace, go in hope. 
Be the light for those who are struggling and serve the Lord. Amen. By the power of God.